everybody, and thank you for joining me today. So still working on the far uh, upper right section of the first pass here on the wall. I'm gonna end up with um, some bigger blocks of color today, I think. Yeah, did a bunch of flowers and then there's more wall section here, so. Yeah, some of it's sort of slanting the other way, so we'll see what I decide to do with my stitching, whether I decide to follow it or not. Sort of depends uh, how far that slope goes, so. Yeah. Yeah, so kiddo is out handing out a few more resumes, hoping for a, hoping for a call back, yeah. Yeah, I hope he's not too disappointed if nobody does. I said, getting your first job is hard, especially when you are still in high school. Oh, I was telling him about trying to find my first job. It was after I graduated. Oh, I think I put out something like 70 applications or resumes before I got my first interview and I didn't get the job, so yeah. Oh, job hunting is grueling. Yeah, I certainly don't think I know anyone who enjoys the process. It's, oh, it's just exhausting. Okay, so yeah, as I said, those colors are slanting the other way, but I think I'm just gonna do two threads for now on either side. I'm gonna see if I can sort of keep it to my normal diagonal slope because uh, yeah, sort of that's sort of just one arm of a leaf or something there, I think. So it's not like where the wall was actually curving the other way over, you know, 60 rows like it was earlier when I decided to uh, to just follow the, the way the stitches were going. Do, do, do. Yeah, and then he gets to go bowling later this afternoon with some friends, so that's fun. Yeah, and the nice thing is I don't have to drive him there either, <laughs> now that he can drive himself, yeah. Because I said, uh, you know, if you want, I can, I can drive you. He says, no, that's fine, Mom, so yeah, I don't mind at all. I can stay home and stitch some more. <laughs> uh. Okay. Yeah, ear is being a bit louder today. It was quieter for a few days. Yeah, and then they tried to call me to come in for another appointment, thinking I hadn't been in for my first appointment. And I said, well, I still need to have my hearing test first before I see him again. They said, well, he'll, you know, come in and he'll take a look. I'm like, but he already did? <laughs> then they said, oh, okay, yeah, they had grabbed the wrong person's file so I said yeah I could come in but nothing's changed I think he wants more information before proceeding so yeah like I've said I highly suspect I'm gonna need a tube in that ear but of course it's gonna take months before they determine that yeah but doing my best to ignore it Yeah, I didn't expect to have so much green in this wall here. The 524 is like a very pale green, but then they put it next to like the yellow and the gray, so then, yeah, it doesn't look quite so green. <clears throat> so yeah, we'll see what kind of progress I make today. All right, so for a bit, it's going to be slow going as I add all the new threads that I need, but then hopefully we should be able to pick up the pace once I get those threads attached. I find that sort of the, the slowest part of the process.
Yeah, like I said, I hope someone takes a chance on him. He is a hard worker, so... Oh, my kiddo, he's a hard worker, so... Of course, I'm biased, but yeah. <laughs> no, he... um. Uh, his school, they have to do what they call stewardship hours every year. So they have to volunteer um, time in the community. Um, I'm trying to remember how much it is per year. I think it was 10 hours, something like that. But anyway, <clears throat> he, uh, he joined the uh, city's hazardous waste roundup as a volunteer one year. So, yeah, he did that and... Uh, yeah, apparently he did pretty well on that, so. Yeah, he and his dad both went to uh, to help, so. Yeah, it's an extra requirement for their graduation. I had to do it, too. And I remember I was almost always scrambling <laughs> to get my my service hours. We had to do we had to do sixteen to twenty. I think sixteen was lower grades, and then like grade twelve was like twenty or something like that. But yeah, <laughs> so oh, I think the worst part about hours though is it wasn't just enough to do the hours. We had to answer all these questions about about them too like how did i help serve my community by doing x you know and oh yeah i was like come on it wasn't enough that i had to do that the work too i gotta write a story about it <laughs> oh. okay so again i'm not really following the diagonal line on my pattern as closely it's ended up more steep because yeah that's just sort of made more sense with the way I'm stitching it just sort of lended itself to that yeah I kind of always try to go as far as I can growing out before I have to move to a new section yeah, soon I'll be having to move my frame over. So it looks like I will reach the far right edge this month. Whether I'll actually be able to fill in that whole corner or not is another matter. I'm thinking that's going to be, that's going to happen through next month's stitching, is my guess. Again, this is blue color, but it looks more gray surrounded by these others. Yeah, so, bit of confetti here. I'm just making sure I was grabbing the correct thread as there's several there. Almost felt like there was a snarl back there, but it's not. Maybe it was about to, and then it pulled out as I pulled the thread taut. <laughs> yeah, so maybe this is sort of my cutoff here, and then I'm gonna. Carry on downwards. All right, another new color.
finally went outside and made my weed killer, poured it on the gravel, so. <laughs> yeah, was, we've had several days in a row without rain, so it's time to get that done. Yeah, I am not a green thumb at all. <laughs> I don't even own house plants because I'm no good at keeping them alive. <clears throat> yeah, there was a meme one of my friends shared that said, you know, if you need a house plant taken care of, you know, killed, I can do that for you. Yeah. Uh. Oh, I guess nobody can be good at everything, right? Yeah. I can preserve the food. I just no good at growing the food unless it's like my apple tree, which just grows no matter what. <laughs> yeah, it's extremely low maintenance. Our smaller one, my husband's trying to keep it pruned so it doesn't get too big. It should hopefully be easier to uh, pick the apples from. Yeah. Yeah, the old one is still, still alive, at least partially. For another year. Yeah, it's it's been dying for a while. Well, I think they probably planted it when they built this house. And this house is yeah. Gee, I think fifty years old now this year. Something like that. And they said those trees that they live anywhere from 25 to 50 years, so yeah. So it might not be original, who knows, but it is It is definitely old because it was full grown when we moved in. And they take, I think they said, like 12 to 15 years to reach their full height. And then we've been here for another 17 years, so yeah. It's had a good life, that's for sure. Produced a lot of apples. Yeah, and I still have a, quite a few jars from last year's batch. There's almost 20 of them left. Yeah, and they're concentrates, so that's more than 20 liters because you have to water it down almost half and half, so that's more like 40 liters, so... Yeah, well, my uh, husband's parents and his aunt are coming to visit us near the end of the summer, so I'll probably give them a box full of jars to take home with them. Yeah, they, I don't need the jars back because I have so many. I, I found a bunch at a thrift store and then one of my friends was cleaning out her basement and she found all of her grandma's jars and said, you know, do you want them? And well, free jars, I'm not gonna turn that down. So I took about four dozen from her. So yeah, I, I have so many. I don't think I've ever had where I've had them all in use at once. So, well, there was the one year I got almost 90 liters of juice from my, from my tree. Although that was before I was, um, jarring it as concentrate that was when I was actually watering it down so you could drink it straight from the jar so but yeah that used a lot of uh jars and I remember my mom asking like do you freeze them all and I said well I don't have a freezer that big so no I I can them because then as long as you store them in a place that doesn't have a lot of temperature fluctuations a place that's cool and dry then yeah they don't need any anything else. One house that we lived in actually had a cold room in the basement. Yeah, which was designed for food storage, but I didn't do preserves back then. <laughs> but yeah, it was pretty cool. I don't know how they did it, but it was like, because it was like, a, it only had one exterior wall, and then it had like this tube coming down from outside, and the cold air came in from there, and then it didn't make the rest of the house cold. So don't ask me, I'm not very, uh, technically minded so I don't know how it worked but it was pretty cool yeah it was almost not quite like a fridge but definitely 
you know, a few degrees cooler than the air in other rooms. So, yeah, I miss that house. It was, it was really nice. Um, yeah, like it had similar square footage to the house we're in now, but the way they designed it was so well that it basically, it seemed bigger. Yeah. And it had a, it had a, uh, two car garage too. So that was really nice in this house we have, and it was a two car attached garage in the house we're in now. We have a one detached. So yeah. Yeah. It gets very, um, <laughs> crowded in there for my husband to work. He's, uh, he's still working on his, uh, Unimog and it's, so it's disassembled in pieces while he works on different parts of it and half of it has to be sitting in the backyard <laughs> because yeah there's just no room otherwise there's just barely enough that he can work around it in there so yeah it's actually considered a collector car so because he doesn't drive it at least not now it's uh, just under collector's insurance, which is a lot cheaper because, yeah, you're only allowed to drive it a certain amount. So, like, some people get that because they they only take it to car shows or whatever. Yeah. So, but it's like, well, his won't be going to car shows for a while. It needs a lot of work. But, yeah, they like to go to the car clubs. Yeah, we've seen some pretty cool ones. and then just make sure I'm doing this correctly counting yeah okay when I have this many rows of a color I have to be careful I don't mix it up yeah yeah confetti gives detail but I kind of like big blocks because they go very fast It's been kind of nice. This summer hasn't been too scorching hot. I was able to make cinnamon raisin bread rolls yesterday. So that was nice. Yeah, I have a bag of flour that's going to expire end of the summer. So every day that it's cool enough to bake, I've been baking bread or cookies or something because I want to try and use it up yeah although I did look it up and they said you can freeze flour to extend its shelf life if you have to you just put it in an airtight container in your chest freezer and then when you want to use it measure out the flour and then let it come to room temperature before you use it so I've never done that before but yeah if I don't use up this flour in time I may have to yeah, usually I'm in no danger of of uh, having flour last beyond its uh, shelf day because usually I've used it up long before then. But uh, I was having one of those deals at the store where if you bought, you know, a certain amount of uh, at one in one trip, then you got like ten percent back in points. So yeah, I was just trying to stock up on stuff that I knew I'd used. And I guess I didn't realize that I still had almost a full bag of flour and I bought another one. So yeah, it's been a bit much to try and use up in a year because that's how long their shelf life is, is for about a year. Yeah. Yeah, I don't mess with uh, Best Buy dates because... Uh, I got food poisoning once by eating expired crackers, which I totally didn't know could happen, but uh, 
<clears throat> yeah, I was visiting my then fiance, now husband, and uh, I ate some crackers out of the cupboard. I didn't look at the date because I didn't even think to look at the date, and yeah, it was not good. <laughs> but I guess it's probably the oil in them went bad, and yeah, you don't want to mess around with rancid oil. That is not good, so yeah. So I know a lot of stuff you can, you know, they tell you the sell-by date is to, you know, cover their butts and you can go beyond it, but I try not to if I can help it because, yeah, that's not really an experience you want to repeat, trust me. Uh, I actually can get more out of this thread than I thought. Excellent. Work with this one here. See how long it is. Yeah, not very, so I'll just use this until it runs out, and then I'm gonna head back up a bit and work down again. Yeah, I worked in a restaurant for a while too, so yeah. I don't mess around with food safety. Okay, so come back up here for a bit. Okay, E thread. Yeah, I had to make sure I put this color, 648 and 647. I had to separate them a bit in my working tray because I kept grabbing the wrong one. They're very, very close in shade. That was how I ended up having to rip out a, like a hundred stitches the other day because yeah. I used the wrong one, and because it was in a big block, it made a very noticeable line. So, fortunately, yeah. Yeah, sometimes when it's high confetti, you can kind of get away with it, but yeah. It was a big block, there was just no, no fudging that. to this corner here where I've got quite a few colors together. Let's see if I can get this to come out. Still threaded? Nope. That's all right. So yeah, I kind of got the diagonal and then I'm going to go out a bit and sort of go just a partial diagonal because like I said, I don't really follow the lines on my pattern closely anymore. I used to try to follow it more closely, but yeah, I found sort of meandering around when it makes sense to is kind of more natural way for me to stitch. So. Results in fewer forced stops. I mean, I have enough already <laughs> with my method as it is, so. Cooperate either. Okay. That's all right. I'd rather it slides out and comes off the needle than that it grabs for dear life and creates a tangle. That that sucks more. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna end up with more than one thread here of this color, I can see, because they kind of branch out all over the place. So. That's all right. Yeah, I've been telling Kid always got to start thinking about what he might want to do for a living. His uh, graduation is in a couple of years. Holy cow. <laughs> yeah, he starts uh, grade 11 this fall. So and he's got one more year after that, which is just like, how? <laughs> Holy mackerel. Yeah, when you're a kid, you know, adults say to you, oh my gosh, you're growing up so fast. And of course, to you, it's like, well, no, I'm not because, yeah, it's your entire life they're talking about. So it feels like forever. But yeah, when you're a parent, now I get it because, yeah, it really does feel quick. Yeah, like It was so surreal that he got his driver's license when it's like, didn't we just take you home from the hospital yesterday? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah, weren't you so small I could carry you with one arm? Like. A week ago <laughs> it's like no you've been taller than me for a couple of years now yeah i said if he if he gets uh tall it's definitely not from me <laughs> although my grandpa was fairly tall so yeah, it's interesting how that stuff can skip a generation because that's how it is in my husband's family. Neither of his parents are tall, but all their kids are quite tall. They're all average height or higher. And uh, apparently their grandparents were all tall. So yeah, oops, that is not right. So yeah, it skipped a generation. Or it's like, um, there was a picture of my grandpa and then one of my cousin and they look so alike it's it's quite startling it's funny because um my uncle my cousin's dad he looks like his mom and not like his dad at all and then his son looks like the grandpa so yeah although yeah there's been a few shots where um my son kind of looks like my grandpa too just in certain expressions it's funny because i didn't notice it until my aunt pointed it out and then oh my gosh you're right he did look like <laughs> grandpa yeah he has my grandpa's ears though <laughs> yeah one sticks out a little bit more than the other yeah my cousin was saying that makes me smile every time I see them because it makes us think of grandpa yeah yeah unfortunately he he passed away before my uh my son was born so yeah, a few years before I had my son, so he never got to meet him. But yeah, my grandma was very proud just telling everyone to call her Gigi for great grandma. <laughs> yeah, she's uh, she's 90 now and still very active, so that gives me hope for myself. Yeah. Fortunate we live far away so we don't get to see her as often as I'd like. Okay, so yeah. Yeah, this is as far as I'm going because otherwise I'm gonna either be going out of my diagonal there, or I'm gonna have to go back to the top which I'm not gonna do just yet. What I'm gonna do is fill in all this and then I think I'm gonna move my frame over so that it's closer to the left-hand edge and I don't have to reach as far with my left arm. Yeah, like I still technically could keep stitching, but when I have to start holding my arm up instead of being able to rest my elbow down, yeah, I'd rather just move the frame. It's more comfortable for me that way.
another leaf here and some more. I think actually it's mostly just leaves and vines here. I have to get further over to get to the next next batch of flowers. Yeah. And then once I go over to the far left to start the next pass, there's some bigger blocks there too. And when I reach the peacock there as well, his uh, his yeah, his neck and chest are very few colors, so that should zip right by. They're very eye-catching colors, yeah, the bright, bright blue. Yeah, there's so many lovely peacock patterns, hard to pick just one. This artist made another one that, oh, what was it called? Two Dancing Peacocks, I think, something like that. And I almost picked that one because, yeah, it was gorgeous too. I think it was a bigger stitch count, which is partly why I decided to go with this one. And the uh, blues on those um, peacocks were a little darker and I really liked the brightness of these ones, but I mean, they were both absolutely gorgeous patterns, so. Yeah, that's always the problem. There's too many beautiful patterns I would love to do and not enough time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and unfortunately, there's really no one else in my family who does this for a hobby, so yeah. It's not like I can really pass it along to them because that's what someone was saying. They hope they're passed their collection on to their grandkids when they go. And that way it'll still be loved and enjoyed. Yeah, that's always the best. Just gonna do yeah, a few stitches here because then I'm gonna leave the rest of these in that area for once I've moved my frame and start the next section. So yeah, I think I should be able to manage six stitches out of this leftover piece. Yeah, that's my cutoff point. Yeah. If you could hear that as I pulled it, it made a knot. All right, let's see if I can take another needle and pick that out or not. Hopefully I can because I do not know how it manages to do that. Well, that would suck. Yeah. Well, it's a really little one, so don't want to rip that out so let's see if I can no you're not gonna behave are you darn it okay well I guess I'm gonna have to put a full-size piece here then because this darn thing decided to troll me <laughs> tie itself in a knot and knots the banes of a cross stitcher's existence Ugh. Find my seam ripper here. Gotta be very careful that I slide it only under the thread that I wish to cut. 
there. But yeah. Finally tracked down my seam ripper because yeah, that uh that makes pulling stuff out much easier. Here we go. Okay, so Ooh, I guess a full length piece it is because that was my last leftover piece and it's just not going to cooperate, so. A little frustrating, but what you gonna do? So yeah, like I said, more bigger blocks of color today. So stitch count is going up faster. can't remember but I think I have eight more passes to go across horizontally once I've completed this one and I made my first two passes uh, 70 stitches each because yeah otherwise my very last pass would have been like 20 stitches and I don't feel like doing that so yeah I added those extra 20 to the first two passes and then I find it's easier to do them nearer to the top where there's less fabric bunched up than to try and do them further down. Yeah, I learned that the hard way. When you have a clamp stand that's holding at the top, then yeah, you have to consider that. Decided I was gonna yeah, branch off with separate threads there. This color kind of spreads out everywhere, so. Same with this color, it just yeah. no, you're not gonna oh, is that kiddo coming home. His truck is a diesel, so you can hear it <laughs> from further away. Yeah, I remember my grandparents had a big diesel truck because they had an RV that they towed with it. So we could hear them coming from blocks away when the windows were open in the summer. Yeah. Yeah, I guess with gas prices like they are now, it's not as feasible to do that because yeah, they sold their house. Then they bought a park bottle 
trailer to stay in a trailer park, which was like kind of a retirement community. And then um, they bought an RV the, to tow with the truck. And then for six months of the year, when it was winter, they would be in the traveling across the states in the RV. And then they would come back here when it was summer. So yeah, they didn't have to experience winter anymore. <laughs> Yeah, they did that for quite a few years. Yeah, we had fun camping with them. Me and my sister and one of my cousins. Yeah, they would have us come visit them for like a long weekend and stuff. Okay, and then I decided another thread that way. Yeah, my grandma taught us how to knit. <laughs> yeah, my sister doesn't really knit anymore, and I don't think my cousin... Oh, actually, no, I think she picked it up again. But yeah, I I did knitting for quite a while, and I still do sometimes, although not as much. Yeah, unfortunately, I find I get repetitive stress from knitting more easily than I do from cross-stitch, so... Yeah, I have to be careful used to be able to knit for hours without a break, but now I can't do that now. Yeah, I was so sad. I had a box of a bunch of sweaters my grandma had made when I was little. And uh, we stored them in a shed or something and rats got in and chewed them all up. So yeah, I was pretty heartbroken because... Uh, yeah, they had quite a lot of sentimental value. Yeah, I had some dance costumes in there too. And same thing, my, my mom had made those by hand because we didn't have a sewing machine at the time. And yeah, they got destroyed. So we should have known better than to store cloth stuff in a shed, right? Like, yeah, unfortunately. But uh, we didn't think about it at the time, so. Yeah, and I remember we lost a bunch more stuff because um, one place we were living in, they had converted the old carport into a room. And um, that was where we kept the piano because my sister and I took piano lessons at the time. And we have a bunch of stuff stored there because it was not really insulated so it wasn't good as like like a bedroom or anything but it was good for storage and stuff anyway um somehow it got water leaked into it and um yeah i was jumping down from the piano bench after practicing one day and my foot went splash on the carpet it was like okay that's not supposed to be there you know and uh we didn't keep you know we didn't have food or drink around the piano because you don't want you know spilling on it so it wasn't like a spilled water or something so then yeah we had to go through and uh so many boxes of stuff was full of papers and things that had been sitting on the floor so they were yeah they were ruined my dad said one of them he picked up the box and he said he put his hand underneath and his fingers went in like you know two inches into the box like yuck <laughs> yeah there's no point trying to salvage any of that it's done so yeah, and sadly, one of the boxes was of our old Christmas decorations, including the stuff that, like, my sister and I had made when we were in kindergarten and stuff. And, yeah, it was all destroyed. So, again, I was pretty sad because, yeah, they weren't worth anything in monetary value, but in sentimental value, yeah, they're irreplaceable. comes. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, my husband had to warn him too. We have a a parkade downtown, um, a parking structure. We call them that in Canada, parkade. But uh, anyway, uh, I had to warn him, yeah, you can't take your truck in there because it has a big roof rack with lights on it and they're too tall. <laughs> you don't want to break them off. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. I did a test once of how many of these Canadian slang terms do you know? And a lot of them, I, I knew them. I didn't know they were Canadianisms. <laughs> yeah. Like they had uh, pencil crayons, which is what we call colored pencils or drawing pencils. Yeah. And uh, it was funny because one of my friends, she was from Scotland, and that was in order because she said they're either pencils or they're crayons. They're not both, you know? And I'm like, yeah, she probably has a point, you know? Because crayons are made out of wax, and yeah, drawing pencils are made out of wood, you know? So they aren't the same thing, but yeah, that's what we call them. And uh, yeah, I think I got all of them except for a couple of East Coast ones because I'm a West Coaster, so yeah. like calling sneakers we call them runners here and uh, yeah parkade parking structure yeah that kind of stuff so okay so I'm gonna go carry this one over to the left because it's shorter I think it'll run out right when I run out of stitches Yeah, or they had calling someone a tool. I was like, I thought that was just a 90s thing. <laughs> yeah, it was funny because um, there was a sign I shared that had all this, you know, no dogs off leash and all this, and it said no Canadian slang. And so I, I said, you know, okay, well, fine, you tool. I'll be giving her as I, as I speed out of the parking lot to go to Timmy's for a double-double. And then, yeah, one of my friends who's not Canadian, she's like, um, can I get a translation? I didn't understand any of that. I said, yeah, because given her means like given her gas or gunning your engine. And uh, Timmy's is Tim Hortons, which is our national donut chain. You know, the U.S., they have Dunkin' Donuts. We have Tim Hortons, but we call it Timmy's. And a double-double means a coffee with two cream and two sugars. So, yeah. Oh, let's not have another knot. My gosh. I'm not having luck this morning. That's two needles. I'll need one. Let's see if I can pick this out. Or if you are going to force me to cut. Come on. You can come out. Darn it. No. Oh my gosh. I am not having luck today. Try one more time. No, you are just not going to cooperate. Oh, darn it. Okay. Ah. The worst part is, that means you have to rip back a bunch of what you just did in order to get a piece of thread long enough to tie it off. That's the part I hate the most, is you have to, yeah, undo a bunch of work. See if that's long enough for me to be able to tie this off or not. It's gonna be tight. Okay, got it.
I tried to pick that knot out with a spare needle, but all it did was the knot stayed in place and the fibers of the uh, thread just kind of shredded, so there was no saving that. Sometimes when you insert a needle into a knot and kind of pull at it, you can get it to pop apart, but sometimes it just tightens it more, and this time was one of the latter. Okay. past my cutoff point, so anything that goes past my cutoff point, I'll just unthread and tuck away for later. So my goal was 5% this month. We'll see because, yeah, I'm not quite at 1% of that 5%, so I'm a little behind, but we'll see. Yeah, if I don't make it, that's no problem. It's just a little personal goal, not a, not a deadline, so.
we almost hit 150 already. Approximately an hour, not bad. Oh yeah, we passed 35,000 now. Total stitches. So I ended up, I didn't change the way I was sloping my work. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Okay, now we can do a whole bunch in a row. One color.
don't usually accidentally unthread a piece that's that long while I'm using it. Oh well, somehow I managed. So I'm going to end up with branching off threads again. I think I'll do those three as well. This thread. That's not good. goodness. I am not having luck today. Yeah, when I move my frame, I'll try to remember to take a progress picture and post it on my Instagram. If you want to check it out. Okay, there we go. Another one. Okay, I think I need to grab a new one.
Well, I said we're big blocks of color, but we did end up with some confetti today. So, probably gonna then cut this part off down here, so my diagonals are kind of wavy sometimes. I don't mind that. still threaded yeah if it wasn't I would have just set it aside but since it was might as well do one more stitch before that I'm closing in on 200. did still get some bigger blocks too. It was kind of a mix, I think, for this session. over oops, to the left a bit. Oops, <laughs> that would work better if I used the mark mode instead of the search mode. Yeah, oh dear, that's no good. Yeah, I'm going to end up with quite a few threads of this color because there's a lot of it here, so... Yeah, that's better. My gosh, how many is that today? Four or five? That one came apart at least. Yeah, I swear, I'm not doing anything different. I don't know why. I seem to be cursed.
past 200, in fact. Yeah, so I find when the runs of color are only one stitch wide like this, I cross as I go. Rather than doing all the bottom legs and then the top ones. I find for these skinny little runs, it looks a little, a little bit neater when I do that, so. I think I'm going to take a break soon since we've gone past 200 stitches. That was a really nice, productive session today. Actually, I can do this one here too. Let's do a little bit more. Another row or so. And then, yeah, I need to take a break because I've got a bunch of dirty dishes that I should be doing but hadn't. <laughs> I put them off. Do this row and park it and I think that is where I'm gonna wrap things up for today but yeah like I said because we had some bigger areas of color today we got a lot done which I'm quite happy with so we had kind of a mix some of it was confetti some of it was big blocks so I hope that you uh, found it interesting but anyway as usual thank you so much for joining me today and hope to see you here again another time all right thanks everyone